Okay, we're going to talk about uh, White Meade's application for uh, aftermarket wheels. Uh, right now, aftermarket wheels are probably the most popular upgrade for cars on the market. Millions of sets are sold every year. And what we've got here is representative of the typical types that you're going to see out there. And each one has its own distinct set of problems that White New can solve. Um, starting on the left, we have a polished aluminum wheel. It's basically just a machined uh, aluminum with a high polish put on it. There's no protective coating. In the center, we have a powder-coated wheel. And on the far right, we have a chrome-plated truck wheel. Um, what we're able to do with White New, and I'll just begin at the, at the far left, uh, we have that polished aluminum wheel. These are relatively inexpensive, but they're very popular. Um, they come in a lot of different styles. And when they're sold, people don't really understand what they're getting into with an aluminum wheel. Uh, it's a very active metal without any kind of clear coat protection on it. The first time you use the wrong chemical to clean it, or let's say you're driving down the highway during, in a construction zone and some concrete dust gets on it and mixes with some rain, you're going to notice that the wheel begins to turn white. It loses its gloss, it loses its reflectivity, and the only way to bring it back is to spend an inordinate amount of time repolishing it. And if it isn't maintained very diligently, it begins to pit. And again, trying to retrieve that gloss once it's gotten to a certain point requires professional polishing techniques and tools, or you just throw the wheel away and spend another four or five, six hundred dollars to replace it. Not a very good option. Um, the powder coated wheel, a little bit more durable. Uh, you have a little bit more of uh, uh, versatility as far as the colors that you can put into it. Um, the only downside to the powder coated wheel is, is that it's a porous material as well. It fades under UV conditions, and as you can see with this one, it's a fairly open design that you can see through, and it's very difficult to keep that back area clean, even though it is a, a baked-on protective finish of sorts. Then we get to the chrome, and chrome, it's very, very anti-corrosive material, but you just never know what you're getting with an aftermarket set of wheels. Um, unless you spend a lot of money, and the chrome plating process uh, varies as far as the uh, amount of chrome that's deposited and the quality of the work that's under All right, on a wheel like this, the, the real trouble areas are areas like this. We've got these bolts that are supposed to represent bead lockers. They're, it's a hex pattern. And typically, it's difficult under the best of circumstances to keep them clean. So if you aren't real diligent about keeping them clean, this is where your corrosion begins around stuff like this. And you have a rivet, a simulated rivet here. And Again, the, the metallic brake dust is going to build up in the, you know, in the transition area from that rivet to the face of the wheel. It's going to become more difficult as time goes on to, to remove, and that's where your corrosion sits in. Now, what White New is able to do is actually seal those micropores, make it more difficult for that brake dust to bite into the material, and your cleanups are much easier. On a, on a chrome wheel like this, if you're polishing and detailing your car, generally, if it's a fairly soiled wheel, you'll, you'll begin your cleanup, with a fairly caustic cleaner to break the brake dust down, followed by soap and water, and then followed by a chamois, and then perhaps even window cleaner so that you don't leave any water spots. When we apply White New, it becomes literally just a soap and water wash, wipe it off with a chamois, it will not water spots. You may have to chase a little bit of residual water because it, it runs out of these little areas here, but it just takes your, your time factor down to a, you know, a minuscule amount of time compared to just a regular routine cleanup. Um, the other things that we can do too, we have these little pass-through holes here, we're able to coat those so that the brake dust doesn't build up in there. Um, a lot of people aren't diligent about cleaning stuff like this, so if you buy them brand new, it's a great time to put white new on because the damage hasn't even begun to take effect and it's essentially going to stop it before it even becomes a, a problem for you. Alright, let's talk a little bit about prep. Even though these are brand new wheels, out of the box, never been down the road, they still have to be prepped before you put white new on and I'm going to go through the prep for each of them because it's just slightly different for each wheel. And the chrome is probably the most troublesome of all three. Chrome, when it's, uh, after it's applied, it, there's, there's a lot of polishing that goes on when the, when the uh, wheel is manufactured and there's a lot of residual oil left on the wheel after that. And that will affect the, um, the outcome of your coating if you don't clean it off. So typically what we do is once we unbox these, we actually use um, palm olive or any kind of high detergent dish soap is good and it'll break, it'll break down those oils. You give it a really good scrub, just take your microfiber rag and really work it into all the nooks and crannies, you know, actually 
wrap your rag around a, you know, this is just a small paintbrush, so you can get into all of these little holes, all the little nooks and crannies, make sure that you get that, that detergent scrubbed into the surface real well. And then once you've done that, you want to rinse it off with good clear water, and then we'll hand dry it with microfibers. And then if you've got access to compressed air, what you want to do at that point is actually go around because these rivets will track water. And the last thing you want during the application process is to have water work its way out of one of these hex head bolts or one of these rivets. So take a few minutes and actually go around and very diligently, I mean at each one of these bolt holes, blow it out. Make sure that no more water is seeping out before you start coating the wheel. Um, and if you want to take that little extra measure to make sure you have a successful job, at that point I would actually take a fresh rag and wipe the face of the wheel down and all the surfaces with a little bit of acetone. Acetone is a mineral spirit that doesn't leave any residue behind and if you have any trace oils left, it's going to get those off of there, and then you know the wheel is ready to coat. Um, now, I haven't explained why you need to do this, so I will now. If you don't get this wheel scrupulously clean and you apply white new, you may see a rainbow effect. It almost looks like uh, a spectrum of sorts that breaks out on the surface. And if you see that, it usually crops up pretty quickly. So what I'd recommend if, if you, you know, want to make sure that you're not going to encounter that problem is just to coat a small area first, maybe between two bolts and let it sit for about a half a minute to a, maybe two minutes and watch it. And if you see any rainbowing taking place here, start your cleaning process over. It's well worth it. Um, I know that a lot of times you, you want to get started and you want to coat, um, but at this point patience will really pay off because if you rush ahead, you coat this entire wheel and see it rainbow, you know you're going to have to clean every bit of the white new out of there unless you're prepared to live with the rainbow effect. You're going to have to go back take your acetone and very diligently clean every trace of the white new off and start over. So it, prep is everything. Take your time. Once you do this and you get it sealed, this wheel is good to go. You know, you won't have to really, at that point, spend any more time polishing it. So just put in your time now, make sure you do a good job, and it's going to pay dividends in the future. Okay. All right, we're getting ready to coat this wheel. Um, what you want to do is you want to orient the wheel like this. The reason being is that you can look down on it and you can see all the little nooks and crannies. You, you stand a much less chance of missing a spot if you're orienting the wheel like this. And just like when we did the car earlier, you want to start from the inside out. We're just going to do the lug nut recesses first. And you can see the reason we're doing it is because you can't not avoid touching that flat. So you want to do those. Get your little I don't know what these holes, what purpose these holes serve. I guess a wheel manufacturer could tell me, but I'm just going to call them ventilation holes. Okay, once you've gotten to that point, what you want to do is you want to start in the bottom. And we're just tracing a line along this little wave here. We're making sure we're getting the product in around those little rivets, those little fake rivets, so you know you're covered and protected. Okay, now we're just going to get the flats. And it's pretty obvious. I think you can see the areas I haven't touched. So you just want to make sure that you get in there. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go trace a line along this on the vertical side. So you're getting two chances to get product into that really tight spot. That's going to be a big trouble area going down the road. That's where all the dirt and debris are going to accumulate, the brake dust. So you want to make sure that you really get it in there, it's critical. Okay, then just travel up each one of these ribs. What we're trying to do is not let the cloth off the wheel, so it's like a continuous application. And again, whenever you're handling the wheel or putting on product, always wear your gloves. Uh, the gloves protect you from the chemical and they protect the wheel from you which the, what you don't want to get on this wheel is your skin oil. So it'll make the coating go south. Okay, here what we're going to do is just literally trace a line around each one of these rivets. It's more important that you get these coated first and then you can come back and even everything out on the flats. And again, you know, make a reference of which one you started with. It's fairly obvious visually, but if you start, say, where the valve stem is, it's easier to remember. 
and again, a continuous style. Don't pick up and put the rag back down. What we're trying to do is just make a nice, even application. You want to move, you know, at a slow, deliberate speed. Let the product actually flow off of the rag onto the surface of the wheel. Okay, we're going to do a center cap. Best way to do a center cap is just put your hand inside of it. It's kind of weird. Uh, how you pick them up and set them down. Uh, once you've coated it, you, you can't just pick it up like this and put it back down because you've ruined. So I put my hand inside the wheel, start at the bottom, work your way up to the top, and off. Make sure it's completely coated. And then just sit the wheel down on the edge of the table, push it back in. Don't touch it. For the powder coated wheel, a little bit different, a little, little little more forgiving than the chrome plate. We've washed this with soap and water, just as we did here, but you can do one or two things at that point. You can actually dry it off once you've rinsed it, or you can choose to wipe it down with acetone. But we found in our experience that this, this finish here doesn't uh, present any problems as far as rainbowing. It's very, very simple. Um, just make sure it's clean. Make sure that you've, you know, you've done a good soapy wash, and again, blow out all the little nooks and crannies. This one's not as busy as the other one, so Really, your only problem here is you just want to make sure there's no water hiding in this little, this little uh, threaded uh, hole right here that secures your uh, center cap, and uh, then you can just proceed directly to coating. Um, for the polished aluminum, again, wash the wheel thoroughly, and uh, again, nothing but dish soap because you don't want to take a brand new wheel out of the box and clean it with something you're not supposed to. So it's soap and water only, otherwise you could knock the gloss factor down right before you even coat it. After you've dried it, Again, you've got the option of just wiping it dry and blowing out all your nooks and crannies, or you could wipe that with acetone as well. Um, acetone wipe takes a minute, definitely gives you that little extra measure of security, but uh, not entirely necessary. Okay. Right. Same prep procedure applies for center caps. Um, even though this is a powder coated wheel, it's got a simulated chrome plated center cap, it's a plastic cap, but it is the same type of creming process that they do on steel, so your prep is the same. So where you had to just soap and water wash this and wipe it down, this one you want to soap and water wash it, wipe it down, blow it off, make sure you hit it with acetone uh, because, again, very problematic. Um, I don't know if you want to focus in on that, Nick. You see how busy that is? This is another, another aspect of where whitening will help you. You can see you've just got all these little sharp little areas here, nooks and crannies. That's where dirt builds up, especially going down the road. And these are incredibly difficult to keep clean if you coat that. Your cleanup again will be soap and water. It'd be so easy to maintain. All right, we're at the powder coated wheel. Now, this, as we mentioned before, um, it's a fairly open wheel design, which means that as you stand back and look at it, part of the visual appeal is that black powder coat that's in the back. So, when these are brand new out of the box, it's a perfect time to do this. You don't have to jack your car up a month later and pull the wheel off and clean everything, um, which can be fairly challenging because these wheels accumulate a tremendous amount of dirt and grime on the back side. So right out of the gate, fresh from the box, this is the perfect time to put a coat on. And I always start with the back. And all you want to do is come up to this, this, what essentially is the edge of the front. And you just want to trace a line around. And you can see what it's going to do. The powder coat, it really raises the gloss level. But more importantly, watch your finger. More importantly, it seals that powder coated surface off from dirt and contaminants making it very easy to clean. Where you might put this on your car uncoated in about a week or two, you're going to just be, there's going to be a layer of gray metallic dust back here. It might take a month for it to accumulate to the point where you want to reach under the car and, and give it a wipe with soap and water. This product's very, very slick. Okay. Once you've done the back, again, orient your wheel with the back down. Always make sure you have your little tools for doing the small stuff. Um, these are really deep lug holes, so you're definitely going to want to make use of, ideally, you can even go to the hardware store and get a piece of wooden dowel. Works as a great tool. I just don't recommend using stuff like screwdrivers or anything made of metal because you don't want to ever take a chance on marring your brand new wheel. And wood is usually much softer than a powder coated finish or a painted finish. Okay, so we're starting with the lug holes. Then we're going to do these inserts here. And again, uh, I'll take my rag, try to position it like this so you can hold it, and just make sure you're hitting all four walls of the insert. This wheel is just one big insert. <laughs> there is not 
there's hardly any face to it. So it's what we call a pretty busy design. After you do those, then move out to these guys here, and you'll see it, it, all of this will kind of make sense when we finish. Um, the shiny polished part is going to be done last because it'll tie everything in together. If you try to do it first, um, before you do the black, you're going to come across it and you're going to leave a streak. So it's always best to finish with the, with the polished portion. And again, you've got this insert with a few little, you know, you got these three little ribs. Just make sure you get your product down into those ribs on your uh, valve stem. If there's not a valve stem in it, just take the rag and push it down in there. Um, it's a very worthwhile thing to do because that's another place where dirt and debris just love to hide. And over time, they're one of the first areas to corrode and break down. So. And again, this is the ease with which I'm doing this is all based on the prep. This thing is as clean as it needs to be. And if you do your prep work, it's a pretty easy job applying the wipe new. You can do a set of wheels in about 10 minutes. And again, uh, for anybody out there that's watching that might own a wheel shop, this is a great upsell. When I first started doing this, one of my first customers was an off-road shop. Okay, last but not least, we got the polished aluminum. Um, this design, I'd call it a medium open design. Um, I, if it were mine, I would coat the back side, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that now, just like we did before. Just want to get a pass across there, because visually, if you can look through these little scallops and see black grime, uh, it's not as, just makes the wheel lose a little something visually. So we're going to coat the back. It's very easy to do. Again, you start with your lug nut holes and coat. Make sure you're getting all the way around in a circle on these scallops. You see I'm actually making sure I hit them about two or three, three two or three revolutions. That way I know the product's going on. And the reason you do that is it's a rough machined edge on that. You can actually hear it when I'm rubbing them. So you want to make sure the product gets down into those machine cut marks so that they'll stay clean. Okay, and we get back to the center. Again, one quick wipe, tie everything together. As you go around these guys, I usually just kind of make a little pass down and around. And then follow the wheel out. Again, you know, just try not to, if you can, try not to lift the rag. And then what you do is you just kind of, you're kind of climbing out of the wheel with your applicator rag and off the edge. And that way you don't leave any smudges from the product. This, this wheel sealed up to the point where you really don't have to worry about um, any environmental damage or any chemical damage. You know, if you run through a car wash and somebody puts the wrong chemical on this where it otherwise would turn white, it's going to repel it and look just like that. So nobody's ever been able to do that for polished aluminum before.